Sup, freaks? It is your boy, Marty Bent, here. That was a weird one. Do I keep going with this one, honey? She, she said yes. I'm going to keep going with it. This episode of Tales from the Crypt, I sat down with Republican nominee out of Wyoming for the Senate, Cynthia Lummis. We had a great conversation. Quick rip here for you freaks who are used to longer episodes, but I think this is a very uh, information packed, dense episode that you guys are going to like. We talked about Cynthia's platform, why she decided to uh, hop back into politics, particularly uh, running for the Senate out of Wyoming, uh, her view of fiscal policy, the federal debt deficit, and uh, a bunch of other things, including Bitcoin, how she believes Bitcoin can play into uh, a fiscal responsible United States. I think you guys are really going to like this. I got the baby screaming in the background. Am I still going? Am I still going? She says yes. We're going to keep it going. We're going to roll it right into the ad. Have you guys heard about the Cash App yet, by chance? If you listen to this podcast ever? Well, if you have listened to this podcast, you may have heard about the Cash App. And if you haven't heard about the Cash App, let me tell you about the Cash App. They're helping us stack sats, send sats, receive sats, and sell sats. We got a laughing baby in the background. Uh... We're saying sats, 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 because sats are the standard, all right? We're no longer stacking fractions of a Bitcoin or buying fractions of a Bitcoin. We're stacking whole sats. Uh, on top of that, you can DCA into sats on the Cash App. They made it extremely easy to set it and forget it. You can buy daily, weekly, bi-weekly, and you have the peace of mind knowing that you're constantly stacking sats in the background while you're not even thinking about it. On top of this, you can stack slivers of stonks if you so please. All right. I know you guys don't like stonks all that much, but Cash App investing is allowing you to invest as little as $1 in your favorite stock. If your favorite stock is a little too expensive out of your price range, you can stack as little as $1. Uh, because all this is connected to your bank account, there's no four to five day waiting periods. You can start stacking sacks and slivers of stonks today. As always, Remember that Cash App Investing is a subsidiary of Square and member SIPC. And then when you download the app, if you haven't downloaded it already, make sure you use the code stacking sats. It's S T A C K I N G S A T S. S T A C K I N G S A T S. You're going to get $10 and $10 is going to go to our good friends at Owls Lacrosse. That's Owls Lacrosse. I hope you guys enjoy this episode with Cynthia. I know I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation, and especially after last night's presidential debate, it is uh, at least uh, a bit comforting to know that there are individuals like Cynthia uh, within our government, grown adults, uh, who can actually articulate thoughts <clears throat> and uh, put a optimistic path forward, which last night did not do for me. I was forced to watch the debate to be on a live stream after. I, I sort of regret uh, putting myself through that, but you guys are really going to like this episode. Uh, if you're liking the podcast, please subscribe, rate, review, send to your friends. Everything goes a long way. Really appreciate you, freaks. Take care. You've had a dynamic where money's become freer than free. If you talk about a Fed just gone nuts, all, all the central banks going nuts. So it's all acting like safe haven. I believe that in a world where central bankers are tripping over themselves to devalue their currency, Bitcoin wins. In the world of fiat currencies, Bitcoin is the victor. I mean, that's part of the bull case for Bitcoin. If you're not paying attention, you probably should be. Probably should. One. What is up, freaks? Welcome back to Tales from the Crypt. We're here for a very, very special episode. Actually, uh, I don't think I've been this nervous for an episode in quite some time. I'm sitting... Uh, across yeah. in a video conference chat from uh, the Republican nominee for the Senate out of Wyoming, Cynthia Lummis. Cynthia, welcome to the podcast. Oh, it's great to be on your podcast. I've listened to your podcast, so to be one of your guests, it's really an honor. Uh, it's uh, it's an honor for me to hear that uh, from you. It's crazy that uh, U.S. senators, uh, potential U.S. senators, have uh, listened to my stupid thoughts about Bitcoin. But we're here to learn about you and your thoughts on Bitcoin today. Uh, I know, I know uh, your son-in-law will call very well. Uh, he's, he's building out an incredible product at Unchained Capital. 
Um, and he, he said, Hey, my, my mother-in-law loves Bitcoin too. And so I said, Hey, let's make this happen. I, I need to learn more about your views on Bitcoin. But before we get into that, uh, I just like to learn more about your general platform, uh, as a nominee this year, what, what is, uh, uh, forced you into this race. I know you were a uh, representative from Wyoming from 2009 to 2017. It seems like you've been on a bit of a hi- hiatus, but are ready to get back in uh, the public service light, uh, particularly in, in the Senate this time around. Well, that's right, Marty. Uh, I served in the U.S. House for eight years. Uh, I came home uh, and got my business life in order And when U.S. Senator Mike Enzi decided to retire, uh, I looked at this Senate race and decided to get in it. The reason is that uh, while I was out of the U.S. House, I served on something called the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, uh, which sounds like an oxymoron, and it is. (laughs) Uh, The problem is the federal budget is out of control. Um, There are two parties, one that wants to spend and the other one that wants to tax. uh, And the consequence is that um, they're both getting their way. Uh, And so uh, we have now nearly $26 trillion in debt uh, with no end in sight. uh, And uh, it's unsustainable. So that is the real reason that I decided to uh, jump back in to run for the Senate. Well, thank you for jumping in. I think there's uh, needs to be more individuals like yourself standing up for for fiscal resp- and fiscal responsibility uh, and less debt. I, I mean, this year alone, considering how much has been printed by the Fed in response to COVID nineteen, it seems like it's it's getting a little out of hand. And uh, as somebody who's been following Fed policy for almost a decade now, which is weird to say, uh, it, uh, it seems like things are getting out of control and there is no balance on the other side. And so, uh, it's great to see that you're doing this and that you, uh, are interested in Bitcoin too. So just to jump into the Bitcoin conversation, like, do you see Bitcoin, uh, providing a way to, um, to curb this ability in any way? I do, Marty. Um, I was for eight years Wyoming State Treasurer, and I invested Wyoming's permanent funds, which is basically a sovereign wealth fund. Uh, It is money that had previously only been invested in bonds, and while I was State Treasurer, I was able to move that portfolio into a completely diversified asset allocation. Uh, But of course, at that time, there was no such thing as Bitcoin. Uh, What we know about federal policy, of course, is that uh, the Fed has a built-in goal of uh, 2% inflation uh, every year. Uh, And uh, so they're intending, naturally, uh, to reduce the value or debase the U.S. dollar. Uh, For me, when I was investing the state's permanent funds, I was looking for investments uh, that would not debase the U.S. dollar, uh, and that would allow us to uh, convert our mineral assets into cash assets that we could invest so that we could spend the interest off those assets and yet retain at least a uh, base value or a growing base value uh, of uh, our investments. Now, Bitcoin comes along, uh, and there's no inflation built into it. Uh, because it has the advantage of scarcity. There's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever mined. Uh, And so we know that it it has inherent stability. Uh, So when I look at investing, uh, investing minerals, taking minerals from the ground, and then investing the proceeds of that, uh, so you're still keeping a very stable investment, um, it's a little bit like mining Bitcoin. Uh, And uh, I, that's part of the attraction to Bitcoin. And then for me, I became comfortable with Bitcoin uh, through, as you mentioned, my son-in-law, Will Cole, uh, 
uh, and my grandson's uh, godfather uh, is Parker Lewis, uh, who has also been on your program. Two really smart guys, know a lot about Bitcoin. And so they have educated me uh, about Bitcoin and the merits of it. And because I had been state treasurer and been investing funds, uh, it, it resonated with me. And then when I went to Congress and we were just spending money like there was no tomorrow, uh, and uh, didn't have a plan for retiring that debt, uh, I became even more interested in Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I love that you mentioned the Fed stated a goal of 2% inflation there, because when you juxtapose that with the, the scarcity and uh, built-in uh, hard cap that Bitcoin has, it is pretty funny to compare this to. And, and another interesting thing about the Fed's policy, too, is they'll say, uh, hey, we, we want to hit 2%, and then they'll say, hey, we're not hitting this target. But it feels like, at least for your everyday American, your blue-collar American that's working 9 to 5, potentially two jobs, that just isn't the case. The, the Fed's undercutting uh, or uh, undershooting of their inflation target doesn't really seem to be uh, an, earnest, an earnest explanation of what's going on. It seems that more and more people are struggling, and one thing that frustrates me personally uh, with the political clim climate across America today is that I think people uh, have a lot of, uh, they're swiping at branches. They're not really getting to the core of the problem, which is, hey, this this inflation that's being underreported, in my opinion, is actually the cause for a lot of the, the inequality and struggle that's going on across our country. And this is just being exacerbated with the lockdowns uh, of the last five, six months. Well, then also, Marty, you throw in the international picture. You've got uh, China that has digitized the yuan, and uh, the U.S. dollar is not yet digitized. Uh, we want to be the world's reserve currency. Uh, we want to stay the world's reserve currency, uh, but our policies are not keeping up uh, with an international appetite uh, for um, uh, a digitized platform uh, for fiat currency, whereas Bitcoin uh, is the sort of standard platform for non-fiat currency uh, that has all of the benefits that fiat currencies don't. Uh, so Bitcoin seems really decoupled in a positive way uh, from some of the traps of uh, fiat currency. So you, if you look at that in terms of a, a global plan, you've got China that is just slowly uh, uh, embedding itself uh, into global markets, into global infrastructure, uh, now into digital currency. Uh, it's embedding itself into the South China Sea. Uh, it is growing its military. Uh, it has uh, it improved and updated and uh, and upgraded uh, many of its military infrastructures while the United States has been um, uh, very much less expansive. The goal of China in doing this really is to become the global dominant culture uh, from an economic standpoint, from a fiscal standpoint, from a financial standpoint. Uh, and the United States has been uh, I think complacent uh, about its role in the world uh, and the benefits of capitalism, the benefits of personal uh, initiative uh, and, uh, and the kind of freedoms that we take for granted, uh, they really are up for grabs uh, if we concede to the Chinese Communist Party uh, this kind of uh, uh, global presence. Uh, so that's yet another reason that I think that uh, digitizing uh, the U.S. dollar as well as uh, uh, opening our arms to Bitcoin uh, and it's things that are on the blockchain, um, perhaps other cryptocurrencies, although uh, I think that Bitcoin is showing that it is withstanding the test of time and I expect it to advance uh, as the, uh, the, the cryptocurrency uh, uh, of choice. Um, and so I think the, it's, it's important going into the U.S. Senate uh, 
uh, that we recognize uh, that we really are in competition with China for uh, our global presence, which is a superior presence. I really believe morally we're a superior presence globally to the Chinese Communist Party. And I separate the Chinese Communist Party from the Chinese people because I have no beef with the Chinese people, but I do with the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, so I think we need to be aware, as we've seen in COVID, that when we surrender our supply chains for active ingredients in pharmaceuticals or for rare earth minerals uh, or for manufacturing to China, we're actually surrendering them to the Chinese Communist Party. And in doing so, uh, we're subjugating uh, free enterprise uh, and capitalism in a way that's really harmful globally. I completely co-sign everything you just said there. It is astonishing how much of our supply chain we've shifted overseas and how uh, we, we got caught with our pants down this year. Uh, and, and when you think about uh, take it a bit further, not just talking about medicine, but talking about the chips uh, that run all of our military technology and a lot of our tech communications technology and our energy grids are developed uh, outside of U.S. borders too. I think this year hopefully will be the wake up call needed to implement policies like you're describing to, to bring uh, some production back to the United States and then uh, bring it back to Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is the greatest extension of natural rights since the constitution, the way the protocol is able to protect private property in the form of a private key uh, that, that is a very intimate piece of information that can be protected by the individual. Uh, I've been saying this for some time on this podcast. Like I think Bitcoin, the network, aligns beautifully with uh, the ideals that this country was founded on. And I just think it would be a shame if uh, Bitcoin's uh, ability to grow here in the United States would be hindered by, by anything going on in Washington. So I'm happy to see uh, that you are going to be fighting for Bitcoin uh, in D.C. Well, as a libertarian-leaning conservative, uh, I, and, and as an older person, admittedly, Marty, I look at some of the businesses that are able to, uh, for example, de-platform conservatives uh, from social media, from fundraising type platforms like GoFundMe, uh, from various media. Uh, you know, that's a scary thing uh, for uh, a libertarian-leaning conservative. And so now you've got businesses also getting into the act and trying to censor conservative thought on these various platforms. One of the things that I like about Bitcoin uh, is uh, it's, it's so different from that, uh, that it, it is censorship resistance, resistant, and uh, it, it just really doesn't care uh, about that. A transaction is a transaction. Uh, so just the properties of Bitcoin ownership make it difficult for people to use it in a coercive way. And so when you talk about the civil liberties uh, characteristics of Bitcoin, you know, I think that just resonates with me uh, as someone who sees these platforms being used to uh, silence uh, conservatives or libertarian leaning conservatives. No, it's... Bitcoin is free speech money, and it does make people angry, but I, again, I think it aligns with American values. And then beyond the, the property assurances of the protocol alone, uh, particularly around uh, private property rights and censorship resistance, uh, again, I was describing to you before we hit record, the, the company I work on outside of the podcast, Great American Mining, uh, we use waste gas that would have otherwise been flared or vented on oil fields to mine Bitcoin, and we, we actually think that Bitcoin mining particularly can help uh, the United States become more energy independent and protect us from OPEC supply per, or in production changes as we were earlier in March of this year. Uh, and then on top of that, obviously uh, make us more efficient with waste gas as uh, as the, the discussion around climate change and the Green New Deal begins to heat up. I think Bitcoin provides a great opportunity to be as efficient as possible with the energy we're producing on U.S. soil and to help fight back against the narrative of fossil fuels being uh, terrible. 
Well, you're absolutely speaking my language, Marty. I, I just love it that that's what you're doing uh, out in oil and natural gas fields. Uh, we need to make sure that the energy that we consume uh, is um, a, as carbon neutral as possible, but we need to be do it, do it without um, worrying about whether it's uh, solar or wind or oil or gas or coal, uh, because to the extent that we can either capture uh, those emissions uh, and reuse them uh, or um, find other uses uh, for, for coal uh, and other uh, hydrocarbons, uh, we're doing the world a favor. We, it's, it's just ludicrous to think that you could leave coal as a stranded asset in the ground. These people that are talking about keep it in the ground are cutting off their nose to spite their face. Uh, we need to continue uh, in researching how to make better batteries so we can store the power that we uh, produce longer. Uh, and certainly in the Bitcoin world, where the, the more Bitcoin that are mined, the more energy it takes to mine Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin is going to become an energy consumer and the price of energy uh, is going to be one of the limiting factors for mining Bitcoin. And so it's important to that we do it inexpensively, that we have abundant energy, and that we do it in, in a way that's carbon neutral because we're never going to win uh, the debate uh, that uh, adding carbon to the atmosphere uh, doesn't matter, but we will win de the debate by saying there are ways to continue to use hydrocarbon energy uh, in ways uh, that prevent carbon buildup in the atmosphere. And you've just named one of those ways. And so I'm, I'm delighted to hear you say that. We have to find ways to push back on um, the keep it in the ground crowd. Uh, because this is a resource that we can remind, mine responsibly, produce responsibly, and use responsibly. And you just named a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we think it's going to be very big. I mean, the, the amount of waste gas out there is is insane. It's actually unfathomable when you, when you begin to try to uh, conceptualize it in your brain. And it's, like you just mentioned, we're just wasting a lot of this energy we're not getting the most value that we can out of it um it is run through generators it will be carbon created but it will help lower the energy intensity index we believe at great american mining and we talk to producers in wyoming uh, at least a couple of times a month and they're just looking at their flares like hey we are literally just burning up a resource how, how can we work with you guys to fix this so uh i think Bitcoin fits very well into your narrative of, hey, we need to be as efficient as possible with this. Uh, we need to help uh, curb the federal budget and then uh, bring it back to the Green New Deal particularly. I think that's especially scary because the way that would have to be implemented would be from a monolithic top-down uh, distribution from the federal government, which in my opinion up to, to date has proven never to be too wise uh, having individuals in D.C. try to micromanage a complex system uh, like the United States? Well, I, I, I want to throw something else at you. I just learned that the, um, the savings, the retirement fund for postal workers is separate and apart from uh, the retirement funds of other uh, federal workers. Uh, and that their funds can only be invested in bonds. Think about how that is destroying the value uh, of their retirement funds. Think about how much additional value could be added to the retirement funds of postal workers if they could invest a portion of that money in Bitcoin and other diversified asset allocations, including stocks. Um, I'm an advocate for adding Bitcoin uh, to investment portfolios, particularly for large retirement pools, uh, because again, it's a diversifier. Uh, it is not uh, inflationary. Uh, it is limited, uh, and so it's a good store of value. Uh, and um, I really think some of these large uh, retirement funds, especially the ones that are government um, uh, run, uh, or investing uh, retirement monies from government uh, employees, 
uh, should have the opportunity to invest in a fully diversified asset allocation, including Bitcoin. We have non-dollar denominated investments in Wyoming's Permanent Mineral Trust Fund, which is a sovereign wealth fund run by a government uh, based on kind of an endowment model as opposed to a retirement model. But all of these funds should have the opportunity to have some non-dollar denominated investments as a diversifier. And Bitcoin is certainly a non-dollar denominated investment uh, that is a great store of value. Yeah, limiting these pension f funds to bonds seems like a prison sentence almost. What, what's the intent oh, there? Oh, it absolutely I, is. Is the intent to align incentives essentially at yeah, the government workers uh, make government services more valuable to drive the yeah I I'm sorry no I was thinking idea. yeah I'm sorry I I have no idea what the reason is that postal workers specifically have a separate retirement fund and that their monies are only invested in bonds uh, that is. Uh, investment malpractice. <laughs> That's right. just an, an absolutely uh, uh, deleterious way to invest people's money. Um, and so uh, those are things that I think about going to the U.S. Senate that hopefully I can point out uh, and begin to help garner relationships in the Senate thing that uh, can help change some of these policies. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you at all nervous to head to the Senate? It seems like a pretty vicious place. I, uh, you're talking to somebody who doesn't vote. I don't, I've, I've lost, I've lost faith in, uh, the political system here and that's why I focus on Bitcoin. But, uh, people like you do encourage me that like, Hey, there are some good people fighting the good fight, but it seems like a, a very hard uphill battle uh, for people fighting for the ideals that you and I believe in, at least during this conversation. Well, Marty, there, there are some really good libertarian-leaning conservatives uh, in, in the Senate, people with whom I served in the House, people that I look forward to serving with in the Senate. Uh, I'm lucky that I got to serve in the House for eight years because uh, uh, quite a number, dozens of the people that I served with in the House are now in the Senate, and they're, they're really good people. Uh, and so um, it, it's a... It, it's a great group. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to get along with everybody, uh, but um, uh, I have some really good working relationships there already, and I look forward to joining them. Um, it, I've had very few conversations with members of Congress or the Senate about Bitcoin specifically, uh, but I look forward to changing that. Um, I think that this is an important addition to sound fiscal practice uh, and uh, that it's time to acknowledge uh, in the 21st century that uh, at the end of 2029, the millennial generation is going to be the largest generation that has ever lived on the face of the earth. And uh, they are used to uh, digital platforms uh, for everything uh, in their lives. Uh, and if the United States uh, uh, doesn't acknowledge that uh, and remains uh, behind the eight ball with regard to digitizing its currency, um, acknowledging the uh, virtues uh, of Bitcoin and perhaps other crypt cryptocurrencies, and recognizing that there are stores of value that are non-fiat currency uh, related, uh, in fact, it's good to have that, those uh, uh, types of characteristics in, in a diversified asset allocation that can help protect us uh, from some of the global threats like the Chinese Communist Party that we discussed earlier. And, and bringing it back now, zeroing back in from the big picture, the international picture, and the congressional picture to the state's picture, um, I, Wyoming, as it turns out, has become an absolute leader uh, in uh, welcoming Bitcoin businesses uh, and it creating a framework, a legislative framework, 
uh, to uh, create uh, crypto exchanges. Uh, and uh, in fact, earlier this month, uh, Kraken became the first crypto exchange to charter a bank, and it happened right here in Wyoming. Uh, it happened because the Wyoming legislature, of all the unlikely places, uh, created a legislative framework to allow that to happen. Um, and it has been a game changer. Uh, in less than three years, Wyoming passed a series of laws to create uh, a really comprehensive legal framework where blockchain technology can develop and thrive. And uh, so we went from like zero to 100 in terms of being a place where investors and innovators and companies and capital uh, will want to be. And it's, it's working out for us so far. Nuts. I was going to segue into that. You have a it perfect, you have a perfect, uh, a, a sort of roadmap to, to roll into DC with like, Hey, look what we've done at Wyoming, the work that Caitlin Long and Tyler Linham and others have done uh, really hard work too to get through the, the uh, structure that allows Bitcoin banks to, to operate in the way they do. And the cranky news is, is massive. And so I, uh, I think that's like another uh, another arrow you have in the quiver going to DC in defense of Bitcoin is like, Hey, look what we've done in my home state. It's, uh, setting the bar. Uh, and there are a bunch of innovators looking to flock to, to Wyoming to build Bitcoin businesses, which is, uh, which is hard to deny, especially at a time when, uh, jobs and innovation seem to be lacking here in the United States. Well, and our uh, economy in Wyoming has always been so uh, energy dependent uh, that getting into some technology just by being ahead of the game uh, is going to be a game changer for us. There's companies like Iowa HK and Avanti that are taking root here. The University of Wyoming launched this blockchain center of excellence. Uh, and get this, the Wyoming legislature now has a select committee on blockchain, financial technology, and digital innovation technology. Now, this is the Wyoming legislature. Uh, so it, it, it's just stunning that you, you have this very rural place uh, that has just leapfrogged other states. Uh, and I got to give Tyler Lindholm and Ogden Driscoll and Caitlin Long uh, all the credit in the world for this, you know, they, they did it in record time. And, and one of the really smart things that, uh, Tyler Lindholm and, uh, Chris Rothfuss and some other really key legislators did, um, is not only did they invent this special purpose depository institution, uh, that deals in fiat and cryptocurrencies, um, but they created a chancery court. Uh, so it can have a legal framework and courts to uh, create and, and interpret rules that they're going to be operating under. Um, so th these are all just groundbreaking, game-changing things uh, that Wyoming has done. And it, it has further allowed me as a neophyte uh, to become a little bit more uh, educated and familiar with how Bitcoin uh, can become an enormous player, uh, not only in our state's economy, uh, and, but in the U.S. economy and the, in the global economy, and, and provide the kind of stability and inflation-proof uh, investing and the uh, privacy uh, that protects our civil liberties. I mean, it, 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 I, I'm bought in, Marty, if you can't tell, I'm bought into this. And I look forward to kind of being a disciple uh, for uh, learning more about this, telling other senators about it, see, if, see what we can do with this. It's one of the few things that is so new that we can actually take a spin, be innovative, uh, advance uh, uh, free enterprise goals uh, here in the 21st century. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. Well, I'm very excited that you're very excited and uh, very honored to have had uh, you on the podcast to, to explain all this and, and go through all this because I, I completely agree. The the opportunity that presents itself because Bitcoin now exists, it's you're out in Wyoming, it's it's a broad 
uh, open landscape that, that we can take advantage of and innovate on. And uh, if the federal government is able to get out of the way of the innovators here in the United States, I think the uh, compounding positive externalities that are going to come from allowing Bitcoin entrepreneurs to and individuals who use Bitcoin to flourish is, is going to pay off for the United States in the long run. So I'm happy that you were fighting the good fight for the Bitcoin team. Well, it's the Wild West, but it's also the very welcoming West. So uh, we invite people who are interested in Bitcoining and helping advancing its future uh, to come to Wyoming, uh, get involved in our society, our economy. It's very uh, libertarian and conservative friendly, but it's also very innovative friendly. So uh, very progressive in terms of the way that it's viewing uh, the future. Uh, and uh, I got to compliment you, Marty, for your uh, exploration on your podcast, podcasts and by, for having guests on who can teach people like me, who's admittedly a neophyte, uh, more about these issues. Well, Cynthia, if you have ever any questions, please feel free to reach out. I would love to answer uh, any of them you have, particularly around waste gas and how Bitcoin mining can help the, uh, the energy sector here in the United States. Uh, do you have any any parting notes for the freaks out there? Any any last messages that uh, you'd like to leave with uh, about your uh, your nomination, your race, or just anything that's going on in the country in general? Yeah, if you know, if you want to learn more about us, please visit our website at lummisforwyoming.com. Uh, we are going to be taking Bitcoin with BTC pay server soon. And uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter at Cynthia Lummis, Cynthia M. Lummis, rather, uh, we'd love to hear from you and learn from you. So, uh, Marty, thanks uh, for your time. Uh, thank, I, I want to thank your audience for uh, being among the people who have informed me about Bitcoin and continue to do so. Well. Cynthia, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you're uh, probably very busy around this time, this particular time uh, in your life and uh, honored to have had a few minutes to discuss this with you. I, I wish you well moving forward and again, uh, here to help in any of your efforts if you ever need it. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate your help, advice, counsel, and good wishes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we got this week, freaks. Peace and love. Take care.